Hi, I'm, I'm Jason Pace. I'm a psychiatrist working in uh, New South Wales and Sydney, um, Australia. Um, I've been involved in private psychiatry since 2003. Um, my first venture was uh, working with a group of doctors and uh, setting up a, a practice called the Hills Clinic. The Hills Clinic is a, um, a multidisciplinary team um, approach to psychiatry and private practice and we own a hospital and a few clinics until a couple of years ago. Um, since 2014, I've been involved with transcranial magnetic stimulation, uh, or TMS, uh, as it's easily known. Uh, TMS is a magnetic treatment for depression. It's a, mag a medication-free treatment for depression. Um, and it's really, it's for people who've uh, tried medications and have failed, tried several medications and not had the response they're looking for. So we're getting some fantastic results. Um, we have offices in Metro New South Wales and Sydney, um, and um, we're probably treated around 150 patients in this last couple of years and getting response rates of around 60 or 70 percent. Considering these people have already been on lots of medications, some of them have been depressed for a decade or more, I think they're fantastic results. So TMS or transcranial magnetic stimulation is a, a way of delivering a pulsating magnetic field um, over the, the prefrontal cortex of the brain or the front of the brain uh, and these are the areas we think that are involved with depression and other mental health issues as well. Uh, the pulsating magnetic fields penetrate about two centimeters into the brain and this creates a huge amount of activity, electrical activity and blood flow activity in the underlying brain structure. And the theory being that reactivating these parts of the brain helps uh, reactivate uh, normal behavior and subsequently improving depressive symptoms and, and other symptoms as well. Um, TMS has been around for a while. I mean, most people haven't heard of TMS, in fact, but um, it was actually probably about 20, 30 years worth of research in TMS worldwide. It was approved uh, by the TGA in Australia in 2007 um, and it's really laid dormant very much for the last 10 years. There's a few research units in Melbourne and in Sydney who've um, taken on TMS machines, um, but really nothing much has happened with it, largely because Medicare funding hasn't been forthcoming. The College of Psychiatrists has applied twice for Medicare funding for item numbers for TMS and has failed on both occasions. Not because of efficacy, it really comes down to a cost, uh, cost issue for the government. Um, so, look, when we started in 2014, we knew it was going to be a slow build. It's sort of a thing that, uh, unless, unfortunately, you can afford uh, a treatment that's around about $5,000 treatment for the course, um, it is going to be difficult for a lot of people to, um, to access this uh, treatment. Um, so, subsequently, the people we've been treating have been people who've been quite severely depressed. I think most psychiatrists are sending us really the most difficult types of depression that they're really struggling with. Um, and we love that, you know, we love the fact that, you know, we're having a go at treating the, the very di most difficult sort of types of depression. Um, I think when the psychiatrist sees the results we're getting, they're obviously sending us more patients, but it's been very hard to convince psychiatrists, I think, to even start looking at TMS. Um, there's such a uh, space of using medications and other therapies that TMS has been difficult to penetrate, I think, into the psyche. Uh, even though the college has guidelines for TMS, it's still been a difficult thing to, to uh, introduce. Uh, GPs, on the other hand, have been much more receptive to TMS and they've been uh, probably referring more patients. But ultimately, the, the patients tend to find us themselves. You know, patients are very uh, much on Google and, and researching stuff for themselves, particularly when they're, they're so desperate with their depression. And families of patients as well often find us directly. Well, I think one of the most exciting things about TMS actually is the side effect profile because it, it, it is very, very well tolerated. And there's been research comparing TMS, CCT and medications. And TMS always comes up front as far as patient preference. It's a very easy uh, treatment to deliver. Uh, it's certainly some discomfort in the scalp where the, um, where the, the coil sits. Uh, it feels, I think most people say it feels like a woodpecker sort of pecking on there or like electrical sort of static. Um, it's something that people get used to very easily though. I think in the whole time we've been practicing, we've had two patients who have stopped the TMS because of the pain. Most people within about two or three sessions get quite used to it. We've got people even fall asleep on the chair while they're having the TMS. So it's very well tolerated. Side effect profile, look, there's really no systemic side effects that we're concerned about. It's very directly affecting the part of the brain that it wants to. It doesn't really affect other parts of the brain or other parts of the body. The main serious side effect is seizures, uh, and these are extremely rare. So one in 30,000 chance of having a seizure while you're on a TMS treatment. And that's, you know, compared, compared to other things, that's a very, very low, low risk. Uh, we're obviously prepared for that, but uh, I don't believe there's been uh, a clinic anywhere in Australia that's actually had a patient have seizures but it's certainly a, a theoretical risk. Apart from that, look, it's, it's extremely well tolerated. I think people who come to the clinic sometimes get a little bit anxious. 
Um, but usually within sort of an hour or two of being here and showing them around, usually they get very comfortable with the uh, with the idea. Sometimes people can get a bit of lightheadedness, maybe a, a little bit of dizziness after the treatment. Some people feel a little bit tired, a bit sort of fatigued. But usually they get on and do their normal day's activity. So they drive themselves here, they drive themselves to work or back to back to home. And really there's not much uh, consequences as a, as a result of the treatment. So the, the sort of results we have um, do vary quite a lot. Um, we do get also a quite a variety of different um, patients that we see. Uh, in the clinics, um, certainly there's some, some of the patients, my own patients that I've referred to the clinic and other patients I don't know that well because they're coming from other psychiatrists or GPs. The patients will tend to come in about three times to five times a week, uh, three times at a minimum, and we see them for 30 treatments. So usually we get to know them reasonably all over the time of that period. And look, the nurses and myself are always pretty blown away by the, the quick change in their, in their persona. They'll often come in feeling quite anxious, looking very flat, very down, downhearted. And by the end of the, you know, the treatment protocol, sort of five, six, seven weeks later, you know, they're coming in, they're bouncing in, they've got brighter eyes, they, they interact with you more, they're sort of talkative, and they just, they, they just feel different. You know? And it's, it's not uncommon to hear from patients, you know, my family and friends, tell me they haven't seen me like this for 10 years. And, and that stuff is quite commonplace in, in, in TMS treatments. Um, the patients who um, tend to do the best are people who are gonna respond usually between 20 and 25 treatments. Um, occasionally we see people who are responding a bit earlier as well. And typically most people who respond are gonna stay well for a long period of time. So studies would tell us that about 70% of patients would remain well at a 12 month follow up. Occasionally we do see people, probably like I'd say around 20% of patients who do relapse earlier. Uh, the wonderful thing about TMS is once you've responded, typically you'll respond again to the treatment. And we've certainly had a few patients who've decided to go on a maintenance protocol for TMS now, where they're coming in maybe once a month or twice a month. Uh, and they've managed to reduce or even stop all their medications during that process. And then we'll just see them once or twice a month for a top up. And that's keeping them really well. I think the longest patient we've had is been at it now almost since we started about two and a half years. We've got two patients who are on maintenance for two and a half years and they yet to have a relapse. So they've, they've been very, very well over that period of time.